Hi everyone, this is Daniel from Uncharted Ways and today we're making some metal look old and rusty. Usually minis are presented in a very polished or pristine way, like ready for a parade. But truth is, if there's any truth about sci-fi and fantasy models, that the characters that they represent are always in the middle of some fight, battle, quest, whatever. Like a big struggle. My point is that they seldom have the time to take the dust away. So how would you choose to paint a metallic monster to fit into our desert canyon? You said rust? That's right. I'm gonna show you a five step process to go from shining like diamonds or silver to an realistic oxid metal. And if you wanna know if we manage to fit our model into our desert canyon, stay until the end. Let's start. The first thing that we're gonna do is to prime the model with a metallic touch. In this case, I'm using the airbrush, but you can use a metallic spray or to prime it and then to give a base coat of a metallic color. We are gonna paint the metallic plates with a very dark red, trying to be careful of staying within the boundaries. But really don't worry because being a very early stage we can easily go back to our metallic color and paint again those small mistakes. As you can see I'm not putting the paint straight from the bottle but thin down a bit. And it doesn't matter that there is not a full coverage, just apply two thin layers. Probably the easiest and fastest step to start giving this metallic monster a rusty bite. Grab a big old brush, in this case I'm using a number 4, but go even bigger if you want, and apply a brown wash all over the mini, and I mean all over it. Be careful about pulling, but make sure everything is covered. This is one of those cases where in my opinion washes do their best because their randomness, in terms of where does it stick more and less, it's playing in our favor. Do you see these darker spots? Usually we want to control where are our lights, shade, etc. But who can control the effect of time on metal? Sometimes the easiest looks the best and let's just be happy when that's the case. Now, before on to step number 3, I need to ask you a question. Do you want the red flakes to be matte or kinda popping out? This is choose your own adventure. You want mad red? Fast forward to minute 3.55. You want red really popping out later on? This is the way. Okay, I think mad people jump to the future already. So if you are one of my shiny fellows, what we're gonna do is to go lightly again with a 50-50 mix of corn red and mephiston red on the center of the red flakes. This is just a fast thin layer, don't cover all the red flakes again, but try to focus in those that are more visible. The idea is to make a small gradient from the metal completely rusty to the spots where the red paint resisted more, the passing of time. So use a big brush and whenever you're done, let's join the non-shiny fellows in step number 3. Now that we are all together again, let's deteriorate this monster a bit more. We're gonna apply one of Games Workshop technical paints, Typhus Corrosion, in all angles, joints, and wherever it feels corrosion would have a bigger impact. We're also gonna go a bit over the red flakes with the help of a sponge. Why this paint in particular? Well, there are other brands and you can make it yourself, but this paint has like sand. I honestly don't know what it is, but it certainly adds texture and that's what we want. One small tip, if you have a nice decent brush that you really like, don't use it. Don't even think of putting this technical paint on it. Just grab a very old one because it will destroy it. You don't have to be super precise with this paint, remember we're even using a sponge to paint. Mm -hmm. 
This fourth step is, in my opinion, the most important one to get a really tabletop standard job. So far, the metallic parts look dirty, but we want them rusty. Let me share with you my personal gym lock to get an idea of what we're aiming at. We can see metallics, yes, but also reddish browns and some oranges. So, where do we start? For showing the red oxide on top of the metallic parts, we are gonna use a brown reddish paint. But we are gonna thin it a lot, almost to the consistency of a glaze. Usually, when I say thin down the paints, what I mean is add some water so the paint flows better. How much? It's hard to say because it depends from paint to paint, but I would say more or less one drop of water for every two three drops of paint. But what if we want to thin it down even more? That will risk getting the consistency of a wash. And as you will know already, it pulls and it's much more difficult to control. If there would only be a way to make your paints look more transparent without losing on thickness? Well, of course there is. Every paint is a mix of at least two main components, the pigment or the color and the medium, the substance in which the pigment is mixed. So to sum it up, the more medium there is, the more translucent the paint, but if pigment is more concentrated, the paint is more opaque. So going back to our major issue, we're just gonna mix our cavalry brown with some medium because we want a more translucent paint. As you can see, the paint thinned down with water is quite transparent. But the second one, thinned down with medium, being as transparent is much thicker. This is what we want. So going back to our rusty body, we want to use our reddish brown thinned down with some medium on those areas that we painted with typhus corrosion, but on a smaller surface leaving areas uncovered with the paint. Wait, go back. Did you think that this is rusty enough? Of course not. We need more erosion and we'll do so by using a bit of orange on top of our reddish brown. Plus, it would be awkward not to use a paint called rust in a rusty metal video, like being provocative or so. So once again, we're gonna thin down with a medium in a 50-50 ratio, our rust, and we're gonna go over the parts that we painted with cavalry brown, but covering an even smaller surface this time. The idea is that the rust is the heaviest on the smallest surfaces. It's highlight time and we're missing just a couple of small details to make this rust realistic. First, we're gonna use our rust paint and without thinning it down, this time we're gonna go on those parts that would be in worse condition and with the tip of the brush, we're gonna stipple the surface adding some texture. If you have a sponge, this would be another great time for using it. Then, as you can see, there are some metallic edges that have no dirt or rust on them. So carefully, we're gonna edge highlight those areas with the same metallic color that we started painting the mini. You might be thinking, why are we going after so much effort back to step number one using metallic color again? Well, the reason why is because painting can be pictured as a game of contrast between different colors, different gradients, darker and lighter, etc. So by bringing back some of the metallic beneath with some edge highlighting, we're giving more depth to the mini, adding another element to the composition. And that's it. That's how I would speed paint rust. I know that the mini is not done yet. We're missing a couple of details like gluing some pipes that I didn't or the rider. So while future me is taking care of those details, let me show you how I made the base with the desert vibe that we used in our last diorama. I'm not doing anything that I didn't do in that video, so if you wanna know how to make desert terrain, please go on and check that video. But not yet, I still have to show you the final result. Don't worry, I'll put a link in the description.
This is it, our parasitic demon engine ready to continue fighting after so many battles. I didn't glue it to the base because I really like how it fits on top of the canyon, but let me know please in the comments if you think that we made a decent job giving this mini a desert vibe. But before I show you the final model with the rider on it, let's have a closer look to what we did. First, we primed it with our metallics and reds. Then, we gave it all a brown wash to make the metallic parts look dirty, so as to speak. The third step was corrosion. We used a paint with something like sand to give texture to the mini. Not literally everywhere, but in many areas. The fourth step was rust. First, with a thin down reddish brown on top of our corrosion, and then a thin down orange on top of the brown and on even a smaller surface than before. And finally highlights, using some orange on the smaller surfaces and edge highlighting with our metallic from the beginning. That's how we did a tabletop standard job to get our mini a rusty vibe. And this is the final job with the Arc Lore Discordant on top and a fitting base. That's all for today. If you like this 5 steps tutorial to make rusty metal, make sure you click that subscribe button. We release videos every week.